Hello everybody! Today we are starting an artwork based on the book The Wish Tree, written by Kyle McClear and illustrated by Chris Turnham. We are going to start today by using watercolors to create the background for our creation. The background is like the setting of a story or the scenery in a picture. It's everything behind the main things you see. It's in the background. The background of this picture from the book, The Wish Tree, would be the beautiful sky with the snowflakes in it. The foreground is like the main characters or objects in a picture. It's the stuff that's right up front and center. In this picture from The Wish Tree, the foreground is the little boy with the sled and the snowy tree branches. Check out this next picture from the book, The Wish Tree. I broke up the big picture above into two different photos on the bottom part of your screen. Which of those two photos on the bottom of your screen is the foreground? The foreground. If you selected the animals eating their meal, then you are correct, that is the foreground. So that must make the dark scene with the snowflakes on top the background. The background. Wow, you guys are so smart. You're so good at foreground and background and probably the smartest kindergartners I've ever met. Good job. In just a second, we are going to use a brand new type of paint called watercolors to create our very own background for our very own wish tree inspired artwork. We're gonna need water, a brush, our paint, a towel, and a piece of paper. And the first thing we do is always the same. The first thing we do is write our name on the back of our paper in pencil. Then we're gonna flip our paper over, take our brush, dip it in the water, and then we're going to swirl it in our first color, which is yellow. And once we get some of that paint on our brush, we're going to make a little yellow dot on our paper. Be very careful. We don't want to press too hard with our brush because when your paper gets wet, it could rip. Then dip your brush in the water, swirl it in the next color, orange and do an orange circle around your first yellow circle. Make sure it's touching that first yellow circle. If we're doing watercolors correctly, then our color should be very light and watery. When you're out of paint, dip your brush in the water, twist it in a little bit of color, and put it on your paper. My first orange circle was too light so this time I got a little bit more orange. If I use less water, my colors will be darker. For my next circle, I'm going to do the color red. It's like a backwards rainbow. Water, color, red, and then paper. And make sure your red circle touches your orange circle. This time I'm just going to get more color and put it on my paper because that wasn't really red. That was kind of pink and I want my red to be just a little bit darker. Remember the less water you use, the darker your color is. I like that red right there. And now I need to get my next color. So I need to wash my brush in the water and then I'm going to get my next color, which is purple. And then I'm going to do a really big purple circle next to my red circle. Water, color, paper. Woo! Water, color, paper. Woo! Now I'm not going to do just one purple circle. I'm going to dip my brush in the water, get more purple, and do a really big purple circle. Now get ready because we're going to fill up the rest of the paper all the way out to all the edges with blue. 
dip your brush in the water, twist it in the color, and put it on your paper. And let's get blue all the way out to those edges. Once this beautiful background dries in our next art class, we will use different paint in order to create a foreground on top of our background. Listen carefully for cleanup instructions. And I can't wait to see your wonderful watercolor backgrounds.